God in the elevator going to the business meeting. We can meet with the Lord. Come on, somebody. Because then there was a time for worship. Genesis chapter 4, verse 3 says, And in process of time, it came to pass. Now, if you really take those phrases apart in the Hebrew, it really means at the end of certain days, at the end of a certain prescribed time, there was need for a sacrifice. Uh, maybe God had revealed that moment kind of like a, a day of atonement, a special day. And perhaps this was the first occasion recorded here in Genesis chapter 4. We don't really know. But, but he had established a time when they were to come. And, and I think it's also indicated by the virtue of the fact that here are two brothers coming at the exact same time. Coming to worship God. They seemingly both had information regarding the time they needed to appear. And aren't you glad that you don't have to have a certain time when you worship the Lord. Amen. Amen. You can Amen. worship him all day, every day. Hello. Amen. Amen. And then there was a way to worship. Not only a place and a time, but a way. God could be approached. But now check this out. God could be approached only by sacrifice. They knew that somehow. The children of Adam and Eve somehow had definitely been instructed that there was a place, there was a time. And I believe that presupposes that they had also been instructed that there was a way to sacrifice. Cain and Abel would have known, and would not have known anything about that at all if God hadn't revealed that to them. Because right here in the scripture in Genesis chapter 4, we have the first concept of substitutionary atonement being given. And so they must have had some information about that. God, and, 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 and they came ready to give. And, and how many of you know that faith comes by what? Hearing. Hearing, right? Faith comes by hearing. And this scripture says, by faith, Abel offered the more excellent sacrifice. So if he had faith, he must have heard and listened to God and then was obeying God. Right? Because faith comes by hearing. By faith, Abel offered a more excellent sacrifice. That he that, that that his brother did, and beyond that, they have the testimony of Adam and Eve. And you see those boys growing up, right? Dad, what are you wearing that sheepskin jacket for? Uh, well, I'll tell you why, son. Because we used to live in the garden, and we, you know, and we tried to cover ourselves with fig leaves, but God had an animal slain and in order to be able to appear before God, in order that for a covering for us, God slain an animal, and we wear these. These uh, these furs right now. So so uh, anyway, th there was a way that they were to worship. How many of you still with me? Yeah. The second point is this: Cain decided to come to God on his own terms, on his own terms yeah. and yeah. was rejected. Cain brought an offering of fruit. Now I want to tell you something. I believe that Cain knew that that was not the thing to bring to the Lord. He understood that. I, I honestly believe that. He, but he came however he wanted to come. He didn't. He thought, I don't need to bring a sacrifice of an animal. I'm a tiller of the ground. I'm a farmer, so I'm just going to bring some of my fruit. My brother has all the sheep, and I don't want to have to negotiate for all of that. So I'm just going to bring what I want, and I'm going to approach God on my own terms. Let me tell you something. We do not get to choose the terms by which we come to God. That's right. Am I right? right? God is God. He gets to be the one to decide upon what terms we get to come to God. Am I right? Amen. Absolutely. Now, a few weeks ago, I was at home uh, studying one morning, and the doorbell rang, and I went to the door, and there was a 15-year-old young man and his sister, maybe 12 years old, and they were Jehovah Witnesses, all right? And, and uh, they started telling me about their religion. And I started to listen to them for a few moments. And finally, I decided, usually I don't, I usually I just say, no, thank you, in a polite way. But I just kind of jumped in there and I asked this young man, I asked him this question. I said, young man, I said, you know, you seem to be very sincere. And I just wondered, you know, God forbid, but if you were to die tonight, if this was your last day on earth and, and you were to stand before God and he were to say to you, why should I let you into my heaven? What would you say? Immediately he answered. Quickly he said, I would tell God he needs to let me into heaven because I live a really good life and 
because I'm out here being a missionary and testifying to people of Jehovah. That's what he told me. That young man, unfortunately, was underneath the teaching that led him in what I want to call the way of Cain. Jude chapter, Jude verse 11 says, Woe to them that go in the way of Cain. Let me tell you, you don't get to come to God and present to God your fruit and say to God, look at all the wonderful fruit I've produced. Look at all the good works I've done. Look at all the great deeds I've done on the earth. You've got to let me into heaven. How many of you know that's not the way it works? And I began to explain to this young man. I said, sir, I said, I've been a missionary myself. My wife and I, we sold almost everything that we had. We put, we didn't see our parents for four years. We, 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 we took our kids to Columbia to preach the gospel. We too have lived a faithful, holy life before the Lord. We've been preaching this gospel for many years, but I told him, I said, son, none of that qualifies me for heaven. That doesn't atone for any sin. Not even one little white lie that I've done. None of those good deeds will add up enough to in order to make it in. There is only one way that Bob Millsaps can be righteous before the Lord. There's only one way that you, sir, you can be righteous before the Lord. And that is through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. If God were to ask me, why should I let you into my heaven, Bob? I could not say, well, look at the demons I've cast out. Listen to my sermons. Look at my ministry, Lord. Look at what I do. That doesn't mean anything as far as all that goes. The only hope that I have, nothing in my hand I bring. Simply to the cross I cling. Come on, somebody. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Cain had his own way. He said, look at the fruit I've grown. Let me read it to you. Genesis 4, 2. Cain was a tiller of the ground, and in the process of time it came to pass that Cain brought an offering of the fruit of the ground to the Lord. It would seem logical to you and me that that would have been an acceptable sacrifice. And yet God did not respect his sacrifice. God did not accept his sacrifice. Why, you say? Why was that? It's because Cain and Abel, like you and me, were born into a fallen race. And the Bible says that the wages of sin is death. And something has to die in order for us to have life. Listen to the conversation that Cain had with the Lord. I'm telling you, I see so much grace in Genesis chapter 4. Yeah. So much grace, so much love of God. Listen, it says, but on Cain and his offering, he did not look with favor. Notice what it says. So Cain was very angry. And his face was downcast. Then the Lord said to Cain, why are you angry? <laughs> Is your face downcast? And then notice verse number seven. What grace. What love. What an entreaty. What an invitation. What, what a reaching out we have from the heart of God. He says to him, if you do what is right, will you not be accepted? Oh, wow. God was saying, look, man, you have to know that, that, that the only sacrifice that is acceptable has to be a sacrifice with the blood in it. Just go get a lamb and bring it here. Sacrifice and offer it to me and you will be accepted before the Lord. Because you say, well, why do we have to use blood? I'm going to tell you why. Because, because blood says, when you, when you present blood to the Lord, it says, I am a sinner. It says, I deserve death, but I'm offering this animal as a substitute in my place. This animal is dying, and I want you to put your judgment on that and put your forgiveness upon me. Is there anybody that's grateful for the Lord? But when God didn't accept his sacrifice of, of fruit, he was angry. And you know that same anger exists in our world today. People who want to come to God on their own terms. Yeah. Am I right? Has anybody ever met anybody that's angry? Sometimes I get angry with you. If you're a Christian who witnesses, who's ever had anybody get angry with them? Just because you said something. Yeah. Right? They get angry. 
Listen, don't take it out on them. They're not angry with you. They're angry with God. Yeah. Yeah. They don't, have a, they don't have a problem with you. They have a problem with God Almighty. They're going to have to deal with God Almighty, not you. All you are is his messenger. Hello? All you are is a testimony. All you are is a witness to him. Right. A couple of years ago, a friend and I were meeting over here at Logan's, and I wish Logan's was still there. But anyway, <laughs> anyway, we were eating, and my friend introduced me as his pastor to the waitress, and and I could tell almost immediately she was not happy to be serving a pastor. And uh, then he invited her to church over here. And I'm going to tell you something. I got anger. Not, I wasn't angry. I got anger from her. And she said, she said these. She said, I don't mean to be rude or anything. But, I mean, you know, people say, I don't mean to be rude. But, they're going to be rude. Hello? <laughs> now, I don't mean to be rude. But, she said, I don't like going to church because... God accepts me like I am, but church people, they don't accept me. I said, well, what do you mean? She said, me and my boyfriend, we live together, and we're not married, and I'm not coming to any church like that because you don't accept me like I am, and God accepts me the way I am, and I'm okay the way I, I am. And I, I, you know, I mean, she was just so angry. I mean, there was really no sense in, in talking to her, right? Uh, anger. The same anger exists today in our world. One of the hot button issues in Christianity today is this whole gay and lesbian uh, bisexual movement that is out there. And I want to say this, that to really love somebody who's caught in any sin. By the, and by the way, how many of you know sexual sin is sexual sin? Amen. Come on. Amen. Hello, adultery is sexual sin. Fornication is sexual sin. Pornography is sexual sin. A one night stand is sexual sin. Hello, I just want to preach the truth today. Uh, but, but, but you know, there are people sometimes when you point them to a passage that refers to their sinfulness, what happens is that they get very angry. Listen, they're not angry at you. They're angry with God. And they're, because they want to come to God like they are are. They don't want to come to God on his terms. And just like we studied in Sunday school today, you missed it, my friend. The very first word that Jesus preached when he began to do his ministry was the word repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. If you want to be right with God, that's the first thing you've got to do. And when I read about Cain in the Bible, you see no repentance in that man. None. 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 What do you see? He was angry and upset that he had got sent away. He was angry and upset and moaning. I would tell you, there's a lot of people that are angry with God about the consequences that God has allowed to come into their life. And let me tell you something. The best thing you can do is just simply point them to Jesus. Am I right? Yeah. But let me tell you. You know, you, you, you look at Cain and you see him out there, uh, you know, building a city, ignoring God, living his life the way he wanted to do. Cain only complained of his punishment but never repented. But the good news is this today. 